we are at the water's edge of the argument that mainstream Christian teaching is hate speech. Mm. Because today we've reached the point in our society where if you, if you do not support same-sex marriage, you are labeled a homophobe and a hater. When these religious beliefs begin to infringe upon just basic everyday activities of people, it, it is when it becomes a problem. So what's the next step after that? After they've done going after individuals, the next step is to argue that the teachings of mainstream Christianity, the catechism of the Catholic Church, is hate speech. There you go, Marco Rubio mm -hmm. making a slippery slope argument when it comes to same-sex marriage. Rubio's comments, uh, we would expect those comments during a presidential election cycle, right. the one that he is in. In comparison, though, to LGBT leader Jeff White's views on gay rights, that's a great place to start our roundtable this hour. Please welcome in to our Friday roundtable, Catholic conservative writer and CEO at Blue Wave Marketing, J.P. Moran. Also joining us is religion and culture expert and radio host at the, and the director at the Center for Christian Worldview and Apologetics, Dr. Or Dr. Alex McFarland. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Dr. McFarland, I apologize if I didn't get any of that correctly. Late ad here. Glad we could get you on for this debate today. Let's get started with you, JP. You have a recent article in Town Hall, uh, townhall.com, taking a look at how both sides appear to be, as you call it, right. You say the gay community and conservatives can find common ground. Where is that common ground? Well, it's, it's somewhat more simple than you'd think. Really, I, I see... Um, Marriage really has two definitions today. There's the religious traditional term of marriage, uniting two of the opposite sex in a holy matrimony, and the uh, maybe the newer definition of marriage, which is just two people wanting of, of the same sex or opposite sex wanting to uh, to marry and enjoy the benefits of the legal benefits of the union from the state. And I think if both sides can look at it from that point of view, um, both the, the rights of uh, religious rights can be protected by law at the same time. Um, gay people can, you know, same-sex couples can get married legally as long as they're not uh, being forcing religious institutions to, to marry them. What do you say, Dr. McFarland? Well, marriage can't be redefined uh, by history and I believe by divine revelation and certainly by human physiology. Marriage is between a man and a woman and that's not just a, a social moray, that's biology, that's history, that's 2,000 years of Western Civ. So, uh, we here's the thing America was predicated on there being moral boundaries the whole gay agenda is predicated on there not being moral boundaries and so what we're doing in in placating some very vocal visible three percent of the population we're really not only harming the lives of people but endangering the preservation of our constitution uh, Dr. McFarland you okay. know you, you look at this and, and we'll let you jump back in here in a second too uh, JP but you know you talk about the need for family values and is it possible to be both pro-family because we've seen a lot of same-sex couples willing to adopt kids and also uh, be pro-same-sex marriage? You know recently at North Greenville University we had on our campus uh, Ann Pauk who's a former lesbian and uh, a defender through her Restored Hope Network of those um, struggling to leave the homosexual lifestyle and she documented as she spoke at our university that uh, the average gay male will have some 96 partners in their life and she said two things in the gay community they use the word monogamish not monogamish. Well, I mean you can say the same thing about you know people who marry cup, uh, people there from the opposite sex. There are a lot of sex. same sex or I'm but, sorry opposite sex couples that don't wait that until marriage. That, um, in, in weddings the idea of being a virgin on your wedding day is out the window because in the gay community one's very identity is defined by their sexual history. Their sexual uh, I, history. I don't know let's let JP weigh in JP, here. JP go ahead. Okay so I, I, I see the point there but you know it's kind of the carpet for the horse. The fact that gays have been persecuted and attacked and banned and it's illegal to be gay in, in 80 countries today um, Go figure that they 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 do that because there's not it wasn't it doesn't make more sense for for the community to, to accept gay people into uh, a more monogamous lifestyle and by uh, allowing gay marriage you're you're kind of solving some of that problem. Um, one of the reasons why there's no monogamy isn't just because I certainly don't agree that being gay means that you're you you have no morals or values um, or that you want to uh, sleep with a hundred people. That might be true to a certain degree, but if you allow gay marriage, it's, it's kind of to the point. You, right. you get people into monogamous relationships. Doesn't that make more sense than, than being on the fringes and being outliers to society? 
And didn't that, I mean, I know you were saying that you believe a compromise could be reached, but Dr. McFarlane, you're saying it can't, right? Um, it is in the best interest of the American public to defend what our founding fathers uh, saw when but, they... But you're there's, basing There's no that mention of marriage in the Constitution, is there not? Worldview. Look, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his 1963 Pulitzer Prize winning book, While We Can't Wait, he argued that America was predicated on belief in the Judeo-Christian worldview. James Madison, George Washington, Earl Warren, up until uh, really the, the Reagan era, we understood that our freedoms, our liberties, our very constitution. All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll end on that point, that Dr. McFarland. We'll continue this conversation. We've got you both coming back for more right after this. Welcome back to Newsmax Now and staying with us for round two of our roundtable, Catholic conservative writer and CEO at Blue Wave Marketing, J.P. Morgan. Thanks so much for staying with us. Thank you for having me. And we want to mention, too, we lost Dr. McFarlane. We could not reestablish a connection with him. So, J.P., it's just going to be your voice for the rest of this topic or for the rest of this portion of our roundtable discussion here. Uh, okay. You know, we look at this issue and we see the public opinion polls. We've seen the the and let's remind the, everybody, we were talking about same-sex marriage. Exactly. And, and you hear about how the conservative Republican candidates this year are talking about, they're not talking about as whether gay marriage is wrong. They're talking about this as a state's rights issue. And that should be mm -hmm. a signal to everybody of, about how the opinion uh, of Americans are changing, is it not? That's correct. I mean, right now we have 37 states. And we've heard some Republicans say this, this is going to be a non-issue that we're not even going to try to tackle because clearly this is the way the, the public's view is going. And I want to ask you this, you know, with 20 countries now accepting it, we just talked about it, was it the beginning of the week with Ireland, Ireland now, now yep. doing it by public vote? Is this going to be a non-issue in 2016? Um, I, I personally hope it's not an issue in 2016, but it seems to be an issue right now. Uh, I think a lot will depend on what happens in the uh, Supreme Court case uh, the Obergefell um, case in, uh, in June. That's that's uh, they're, they're, there's going to be obviously that's going to change the discussion a little bit. <laughs> well, one of the things that you know folks talk about is when you talk about gay marriage and you compare it to the issue of religious freedom, mm -hmm. the message gets a little watered down, especially when you have incidents like the one we're about to talk about here. Last year, former Lance Corporal uh, Monica Sterling was court-martialed for keeping a Bible verse displayed mm -hmm. on her refu or computer, refusing to take it down. That verse read, "No weapon formed against me." shall po uh, prosper. Now, Sterling received a demotion and bad conduct discharge. The Navy Marine Corps of Appeals Court ruled against her first appeal, saying words could be seen contrary to good order and discipline. Now the case will be heard at the military's highest court, the Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces. So I want to ask you, has the military, um, does, does, what kind of message, I should say, does this case send to people, do you think? Is this going too far? Um, and to, uh, I, I, th I think it is. I mean, um, when, when going back to the gay rights uh, and the gay marriage issue, um, if I may, um, I, I want to just address, you know, uh, conservatives are saying this can't be done, or in some, 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 uh, some of the left are saying we cannot find a compromise here. Scotland formed a uh, great compromise last year doing exactly what I propose in my article, um, which is um, allow gay people to get married, but don't force religious institutions or people that mm -hmm. objectively, um, that, that object to gay marriage, don't force them to marry people, same-sex people. So I think um, there, is, there is a compromise here that, that can be found. And in terms of the, the case that you mentioned, I'm not very familiar with that case specifically, but certainly um, the government is going way too far if they're, if, if they're uh, attacking someone's freedom of speech like that. What do you think about businesses, because obviously this came up um, a little while ago with a business that didn't want to cater a gay wedding. I think that's where it gets a little fuzzy there, because if a business says, well, it's against our religious beliefs, we do not believe in homosexuality, therefore I'm not going to cater this wedding, and then you have people saying, well, that's being homophobic, that's against the law, now you're being prejudiced. I think that's where I see a lot of people struggling, don't you? Yes, yes, and, and what's interesting about the Scotland law I mentioned, um, when Scotland passed this law last year, encoded in law, it's, it, it, it stated that people cannot be called and considered uh, bigots or homophobes for objecting to same-sex marriage. 
Um, I thought that was a very smart way to do it. Uh, they actually have it encoded in their law. And so that um, gives that gives shelter for the folks who do want to still protest this institution of same-sex marriage, if you want to call it that. But as we look at this also, you talk sure. about Scotland, you talk about legalizing marriage and making sure the churches don't have to recognize it. But then what is the difference between, say, a civil union and a marriage? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of simple. If, if, from the, from the uh, gay's point of view, um, the struggle is very simple, almost the same as, as, racial, as the, uh, the struggle with race. And if you were to tell a black and white couple that they can't get married, but they can have a civil union, um, I think it'd be pretty obvious that that would be considered obviously discriminatory. Um, so from the, from, the, from the gay's point of view, I think, um, from the LBGTQ, uh, I should say, point of view, that would be considered not equal. And so I think uh, from their perspective, they don't want to feel like they're having a, they're, they're, they're less, um, they're lesser than, than straight people being married. And I can understand that. Um, so if that's their position, I don't think they're going to change. And I don't think it's going to, you know, I don't think they're going to, the, the gay community is going to accept anything less than the, the title of marriage. Well, it's a fascinating take on the issue, JP, and I think it's one we'll have to talk more about here because this isn't going away. You mentioned the Supreme Court case, which we'll mm -hmm. see here in yes. uh, just a few weeks. So we'll have you back to talk about that. And uh, JP Morin, you can find his uh, article on townhall.com. We thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I really don't know what the Supreme Court is going to do here in June. I mean, I considering know. that there's so much momentum, 37 states, as you mentioned, is it really necessary for them to weigh in? I don't know. I think it's a, it's that fuzzy line there that they need to define. You think they are going to define it? I'm not sure. We'll talk about it. Much more to come up here on Newsmax Now.